My name is Yavuz Aydın. I was a judge in Turkey as of 2016. I saw those images and those breaking news on TV. I was really shocked. I was like stuck on the screen till 6 a.m. in the morning. I was so tired and I went to bed. I went to bed as a judge and woke up as a terrorist. Let's go back to the breaking news out of Turkey. An attempted coup leading to chaos, death and instability. See, these are some of the pictures coming into us from the Turkish broadcaster NTV. Before then, I had worked as a judge at different levels of judiciary uh, for more than 14 years. Uh, I worked as a judge reporter at the Minister of Justice, DG European Union Affairs. Between 2010 to 2014, more than three years, I worked as Justice Counselor at Permanent Representation of Turkey to the EU in Brussels for the harmonization of Turkish uh, legislation and practice with that of the EU. I woke up with my phone ringing, ringing. Many people called me from among my uh, colleagues and my family, my wife. So when I just answered the phone, I learned uh, in my bed that uh, there was a list of judges and prosecutors, thousands of judges and prosecutors to be dismissed and the High Council of Judges and Prosecutors uh, convened with that agenda. By the time I could wash my uh, face and just uh, really wake up, I learned that uh, I was dismissed. Those included in the list, we understand it later, that they were all the ones who didn't vote for the government's list of Council of Judges and Prosecutors in 2014. I, along with thousands of other uh, colleagues of mine, didn't support that list. So we were against the idea that a government, uh, any government, not only Turkish government, any government in the world shouldn't be in a position to control judiciary. It was on the news as breaking news that approximately 3,000 judges and prosecutors were dismissed. Uh, so there were lists on almost every website. It was shared with the, uh, the media. We were really shocked. I learned that some colleagues of mine, especially in eastern part of Turkey, uh, had already been arrested. Their houses were raided by tens of uh, uh, anti-terror police teams and they were handcuffed from behind before the eyes of their children and their families. As a judge, I just waited for uh, the police at home. I knew I didn't do anything. I knew it was unconstitutional. I knew it was illegal. It was illegitimate to rate the judges like this. The accusation was being involved in coup attempt. So <laughs> I saw it on TV, for God's sake. And uh, I was sleeping when all these uh, decisions were taken. There was a reason why the government attacked the judges first. If you have a goal which is illegal, if you want to get rid of these checks and balances, if you want to do nasty things uh, without control, the first thing you should do is getting rid of judiciary. They dismissed uh, more than 4,000 of them and they arrested approximately 3,000 of them and 500, around 500 of them are still in jail after more than four years now. They replaced them with 11,000 new judges and prosecutors in uh, four years' time. After 2013, the government had started to hire 
judges and prosecutors against the law. So they had hired already uh, approximately 4,000 judges and prosecutors between 2013 to 2016. If you add this 11,000 judges and prosecutors who were employed after 2016, more than 14,000 out of 21,000 judges and prosecutors have been illegally employed by a ruling party. When I saw all those images of people tortured uh, by the police and by the government office, uh, officers, uh, and those images were aired by the state TV channels themselves, I decided to leave home and I went to uh, Izmir, the neighbor city of Manisa where I worked. Two days after the coup attempt, police raided uh, my home and they conducted a search, an illegal search again. And uh, while I was not uh, at home, nobody was at home, they seized uh, my computers and my other phones and other things. real coup was declaration of state of emergency which suspended all the freedoms and rights and liberties after almost two months uh, i decided to leave the country we had to pay smugglers forty thousand dollars for the freedom of uh, my family our passports uh, were confiscated. Our uh, bank accounts were frozen. We were deprived of our title, our job, uh, our savings, our assets. So there, there was only one way remaining. We passed through Bulgarian border on foot. Uh, after nine hours of walking uh, with the help of uh, some Afghan guides and we slept in forest uh, that was freezing cold in forest at the end of this uh, September. It was really painful and I can say I understood uh, what these Syrian uh, asylum seekers uh, who flee the war, what, what they feel, what they go through. So we reached the border, the Romanian border with Hungary. So we slept in forest for at least three nights uh, in, on freezing cold nights with my eight-year-old son and 14-year-old uh, daughter then. And with my wife, we were with an SED family who were fleeing ISIS persecution. And a young lady who was raped for several times by ISIS. I had the name of one of these guys, so I really wonder what happened to him. Uh, he was an editor, uh, editor-in-chief of a TV uh, channel in Iraq. And he was targeted by ISIS just because of a short uh, movie uh, he shot with, uh, in collaboration with BBC. I stayed in Romania for two years where I got my asylum. I had my refugee status in Romania. Uh, after two years in uh, Romania, they came to Brussels. I started to study migration policies of EU at the uh, University of Brussels, uh, ULB. I really wanted to help my colleagues and all those persecuted people in Turkey by 
uh, trying to explain uh, what's happening in Turkey. ECHR shouldn't and cannot keep on postponing uh, decisions on Turkey with the argument of exhaustion of domestic remedies in Turkey. There's no effective remedy in Turkey. So uh, we should just wake up from this lie, especially after the decisions uh, of ECHR itself about Osman Kavala and Selahattin Demirtas. In these two decisions, ECHR uh, concluded that uh, the courts uh, decided uh, in pursuing to political motives rather than uh, justice. So for the first time, uh, the court concluded that Turkey breached Article 18 of the uh, European Convention on Human Rights. On top of this, we have the uh, Resolution 2156 of Parliamentary Assembly of Council of Europe in 2017, which suggests that Turkey uh, no longer meets the Copenhagen criteria, namely the uh, democratic uh, institutions uh, are not functioning properly and there is no uh, rule of law in place, there is no independent judiciary anymore in Turkey. I hope Turkey Tribunal will help this reality to be known by everyone in judicial area. Erdogan says world is bigger than five, meaning the five uh, permanent members of Security Council at the UN. And I can say Turkey is much bigger than Erdogan. As Ahmed Altan says, who is a worldly renowned novelist, journalist, and an intellectual who is still in jail for uh, four years now, justice is severely wounded in Turkey, in comatose. But I believe that justice will make its comeback.